welcome to jcb connect uh, today's course additive manufacturing 15 ma 82 division c model 4.5 myself dr anand kevasinde joint college of engineering belagavi outline of the presentation introduction flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis process advantage of flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis and disadvantage of flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis let us see uh, the, some introduction about the flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis that is Messi et al in 1993 has shown the spray pyrolysis has been used for the synthesis of the particle of micron size producing various metal powders in 1993 and Tasi et al in 2004 used ultrasonic spray pyrolysis and observed that uniform particles of 19 nanometer can be synthesized from smaller droplets where large droplets generated porous particles and with Kimi et al in 2005 synthesized hollow spherical silica particles using ultrasonic flash pyrolysis by adding a small amount of urea to the sodium silicate solution. Spray pyrolysis can define as an aerosol process that atomizes a solution and heats the droplets which are formed by the atomizer to produce a solid particle. And the spray pyrolysis method where which is a very important from industrial point of view the simple method it is a scalable method can be applied to large areas and hence you can make lot of material using this spray pyrolysis technique from the word spray and pyrolysis you can understand that something will come out as an aerosol and will then be heated to produce the solid particle so the pyrolysis is the term which is telling you that something is going to be heated here you can see something is going to be heated and it is going to break down the droplets into a particle break down into a droplet into a that is nano particle you can here you can see and so typically a spray pyrolysis can define as an aerosol process that atomizes a solution and heats the droplets which are formed by the atomizer to produce solid particles so you can consider two steps or you can break down the spray pyrolysis method in two basic steps one you have the atomizer which creates the droplet and then those droplets are fall off on some substrate which is heated here which is heated and gets these solvents evaporates and you get a solid particle for those who may not have studied what is aerosol or colloidal chemist aerosol are typically a droplets in a solid particle in a liquid this kind of aerosol process which you can use to make droplets and these droplets then will produce a solid particle it is a basic method or a simple spray pyrolysis method it is also called convectional spray pyrolysis method it is very simple and is low cost process by which you can deposit thin film so where what you do is you have this solution and that is solution is sprayed using atomizer or a nebulizer here you are going to have the nebulizer on to the heated substrate here substrate and then you can get a particles or a films depending on your technique so spray pyrolysis method is a good technique for low cost deposition can be applied to a very large area you have many application where you need to make thin film of size of say one square meter by one square one meter by one meter so those kind of large area application are easy to be carried out using spray pyrolysis more sophisticated technique is difficult to make larger area thin films or a coating which are easily done by the spray pyrolysis method you do not need a very complex experiment setup for example you do not need a very extremely clean rooms or clean environment like is used for certain 
very sophisticated technique. You do not need a high vacuum, for example, to do this kind of spray paralysis based thin film deposition. The precursor that you used here, you are going to have the precursor that you are going to use that is starting material that you the use are not very expensive in the spray paralysis method. So overall, we can say that this methodology can be applied with very minimal cost in most of our most of the or many of the industry and can give you the viable industrial process which can be scaled to a very large sized area. And here you can see this is the process what actually happened in this uh, uh, that is flame assisted ultrasonic paralysis. In this process precursor and precursor are nebulized and then unwanted components are burnt in a flame to get a required material example ZRO2 has been obtained by this method from a precursor or ZR CH3 CH3 CH2O4 flame hydrolysis that is a variant of this process is used for the manufacture of fused silica in this process silicon tetrachloride is heated in a oxyhydrogen flame to give highly dispersed silica in this process silicon tetrachloride is heated in a oxyhydrogen flame to give highly dispersed silica the resulting white amorphous powder consists of spherical particles with a size in the range of 7 to 40 nanometer the combination flame synthesis in which burning of the gas mixture example acetylene and oxygen or a hydrogen and oxygen supplies the energy to initiate the pyrolysis of precursor compound is widely used for the industrial production of powders in a larger quantities such a carbon black fumed silica and titanium dioxide however, however since the gas precursor during the reaction is high highly allogometallated powders are produced which is a disadvantage for subsequent processing the basic idea of a low pressure combustion flame synthesis is to extend the pressure range to the pressure used in the gas phase synthesis and then to reduce or avoid the allogometallation low pressure flame have been extensively used by aerosol scientists to study the particle formation in the a key for the formation of nanoparticles with a narrow size distribution is the exact control of the flame. The flame we have to control to get a narrow size distribution in order to obtain flat flame front under these conditions. And here we will see the some advantages of this uh, para, uh, that is flame assisted ultrasonic spray pyrolysis that we are going to have uh, that is a, uh, a spherical morphology, narrow particle distribution, easy penetration of the powder with a complex nanoparticle. We have that is nanoparticle and relatively homogeneous composition. That is the advantage are the most to the time or most other spray process process. If you choose your starting precursor properly and choose your solvent also appropriately, then you end off with particle with spherical morphology with the reasonable narrow particle size distribution. The process is quite simple and ultimately it is good product for minimal investment. So this has a lot of advantage to take the process to the industrial scale. In addition, it also has an other advantage like you do not need a very expensive ultra high vacuum system that may other processes which prepare particles or a film require. This technique can continuously produce the material in a continuous mode. These are added an advantage to the few advantages that were mentioned earlier. The unique characteristics of the spray pyrolysis technique is that the chemical reaction occurs within those droplet, within those droplet, within the created micron to a sub micron size liquid 
droplet so which can fall as a micro capsule reactor or a micro reactor we will see some limitations or a disadvantage the technique is a quite empirical with the number of variable that can affect the final product solute concentration temperature gradient resident time in the furnace and carrier gas with many most of the process there are certain limitation to this process too the spray pyrolysis method is quite empirical with a large number of large number or a variable that can affect the final product so you can have to optimize these parameters and hence when you move from one set up parameters to another set up parameters you might change the distribution of the particle size in the final product the size of the particles or the nature of the particle so the various variable they can be considered to be as follow the solute concentration that is initially what you take in the precursor you have some solute which you dissolve dissolvent in the solvent what is concentration is very important you what is the process of atomization are you using a nebulizer this whatever the nebulizer and precursor is important at the starting of the process a very high pressure or using a <coughs> ultrasonic atomizer so there are various type of atomization technique which will each will have its own mark on the process thank you for watching